Welcome back to a roundup of the news, and it's that time of the year when the announcements start coming thick and fast. We've got totally new models, some special limited editions, you know how I love those, and there's even some great rally raid racing news for local fans in the shape of a factory hero rider at the Morocco rally. First though, that totally new model. It is, I think, going to be a massively important one, destined to sell in large numbers, which it will achieve by taking sales away from the current stars of the middleweight naked class. The biggest star of them all is currently Yamaha's MT-07, an excellent bike that has offered a class-leading mix of performance, build quality and desirability for many years, though recently it has come under renewed pressure from Triumph's Trident 660. Suzuki has had the SV650, though that'll soon be replaced by a parallel twin 700cc model of some description, so Suzuki isn't really a threat at the moment. Though, Kawasaki offers the very good value for money Ninja 650. Honda has always used its four-cylinder CBR650R to compete in this segment, but now it has unveiled its new CB750 Hornet and it has a 755cc parallel twin. It has a little bit of a leg up in terms of capacity then over Yamaha's 689cc MT-07, and it has used that advantage to good effect because its claimed 92 horsepower is a significant 18 horsepower up on what the Yamaha is making. The completely new motor has a 270 degree firing order that means there will be more of a V-twin sound and feel to the engine. There's a slipper clutch and a two-way quick shifter will be an option. Unusually for this class of bike, there's a decent helping of electronics to play with, all controlled via the five inch TFT screen that will also have four different displays from which you can choose, including some that replicate traditional analog dials. The screen can also be connected by Bluetooth to your phone and then can be apparently controlled by some kind of new Honda smartphone voice control. This level of complexity is quite the development for the class since the bike is expected to sell for less than Honda's own current CBR650R and Yamaha's MT-07, with prices in the rest of the world suggesting it could be about 140,000 Rand if it's imported to South Africa. That's a serious increase in performance and ability combined with a lesser price and that'll be a hard combination to ignore for anyone looking to buy a middleweight naked bike. Anyway, back to those electronics that will feature four riding modes, rain, standard, sport and user, and there's also three stages of engine braking and traction control. There's even wheelie control though, that does seem a bit like wishful thinking on a 92 horsepower, 190 kilo bike. There's a steel diamond frame and show a separate function big piston forks paired with some radial Nissan calipers for the front end. The looks are suitably inspiring too, I think you'll agree, having been crafted in Honda's Rome-based design facility and there's a definite angular European air to the silhouette. The Hornet made its debut at the Intermot Expo in Germany and at the same event there was another very interesting new arrival in the shape of an electric bike from Kawasaki. Although supposedly still only a prototype, it's also being described as virtually production ready, so this is undoubtedly what we will see when it eventually goes on sale. Kawasaki has made clear that it believes the next 10 to 15 years will see the switch to electric propulsion become a fait accompli and it wants to be the market leader in electric bikes. This EV is one of the two bikes that were seen ever so briefly during a parade at the Suzuka 8 Hours race a few weeks ago, but it's the first time it's been on static display where the public can get up close and personal with it. It will supposedly produce just under 15 horsepower, which means that it's a traditional 125cc equivalent, and at first glance it's remarkable how similar it looks to current small capacity Kawasaki's. The same design language is there and the battery and electric motor have been incorporated into the package in a way that feels more natural than many of the big blocky electric bikes that are currently available. Moving back to the world of the internal combustion engine and Triumph motorcycles who have been on something of a roll for a few years now with a deluge of new models, all of which we've really enjoyed from the monstrous Rocket 3 to the 
budget friendly trident from the adventure bikes to the brilliant naked sport bikes and of course their ever expanding racing presence with their engines filling the Moto2 grid and a team even expected to hit the motocross GP World Championship in just over a year from now. And they've also been on a run with their special edition celebrating everything from Breitling watches to a James Bond film tie-in. Well, on the back of the success of the previous limited Bond edition Triumph Tiger 900 in 2021 and the Scrambler 1200 from the year before that were both tied into the No Time to Die film, there is now a Speed Triple Double R Bond edition that hasn't actually been seen in a film, so is rather designed to celebrate 60 years of James Bond films. Hence there are only 60 being made, and unless you've ordered one already, then you can probably rest assured that you're not going to get one now, because they'll inevitably have sold out within nanoseconds of being announced. The 81,000 Rand Premium over the standard Speed Triple Double R gets you some tasteful grey on black decals of the 007 and 60 numbers, some gold pinstriping, um, the same colour as the standard Erlen shocks, and from the front there's a rendering of that rifling effect that you see at the end of the opening title sequence of every Bond film where the viewer looks down the barrel of Bond's Walther PPK pistol. The decals also extend to include on the back of the tank the titles of all 25 of the officially recognised Bond films. Otherwise, mechanically and electronically, it is exactly the same as the standard bike. Not to shortchange the experience, there's an individual numbered plaque on the top yoke, uh, an indoor cover for the bike and a certificate signed by Triumph boss Nick Bloor. Obviously, the guaranteed rarity value is what you're paying your 80 grand for, not the actual stickers. And if it makes you happy, then good for you. See, I can report on these mind-numbingly inane limited editions without being sarcastic. I'm quite proud of myself. And finally, we just have enough time to celebrate the exploits of the Kalahari Ferrari. Botswana's very own Ross Branch, who regular viewers will know, has switched this year to being a factory rider for the Hero Rally Raid team that has as its main goal the desire to expand on its first stage victory at this year's Dakar Rally. The World Rally Raid Championship is fought out over five rounds, although this year that unfortunately has been reduced to four events with the cancellation of the Kazakhstan race. The Rally of Morocco has just finished and the Hero team suffered mixed fortunes with Ross Branch's teammate Rodriguez being forced to retire after a crash. Our Southern African hero, Hero Rider, did the team proud though, managing to win the first stage and showing strongly throughout the rest of the event, even getting himself on camera flipping over the handlebar on the crest of one awkward dune. Congratulations to both Ross and the Hero team, things are beginning to look positive for more Dakar success in 2023. And by the way, if you want to keep a closer eye on the Calamari Ferrari, no, sorry, that's Don, on the Kalahari Ferrari, head on over to the World Rally Raid YouTube channel where you can check out highlights of all the stages from all of the events. And on that uplifting note, we'll have to call it for this episode and say cheers for now. We'll see you in the next one.